The topic today is paradigm shift in QA, perform patient and machine QA at a, every fraction. And will be present, presented by my colleague Madeleine Holm, who is our product manager. She will address the following. How verifying the dose at each fraction leads to efficient QA workflow. Why verifying the dose at each fraction is necessary for safe radiotherapy. What a transmission detector can do to improve efficiency for your clinic, staff and patient. And did the patient actually receive the treatment prescribed? Without further ado, please welcome Marilyn. Thank you, Anders, for that introduction. Um, yeah, so my name is Madeleine. I am the software product manager at Scandidos, and I also work as an application specialist. And today I will be presenting to you this um, paradigm shift in radiotherapy QA um, about how to perform QA at each fraction. I want to start off by talking a little bit about transmission detectors. So maybe your clinic has been treating patients without verifying the dose at each fraction for years and well you never had any accidents. So why should you suddenly start spending um, money and time on a device that you've done fine without before? Well, I think this image is rather um, informative, let's say. About 20 years ago, in vivo dosimetry was common and even mandated in several countries. However, as radiotherapy has become more and more complex, Traditional in vivo dosimetry has lost its relevance. So it's no longer meaningful to um, perform QA by placing diets on the patient's skin. As a substitute, many clinics use pretreatment verification for plants that can't be measured with diets. But is this a sufficient alternative? Pretreatment measurements with a dedicated phantom, such as the Delta 4 Phantom Plus, which Scandidose provides, can provide a lot of information about the delivered dose, which can ensure a safe treatment. However, and this is important, at the instance of the pretreatment measurement. However, no information is going to be obtained about the ra radiation delivered when the patient is actually being treated. So this, in fact, means that the faults that can and that do occur during the course of the treatment will not be picked up during pretreatment QA. Because accidents do occur. In fact, over the last three decades, at least 3,000 patients were affected by radiotherapy incidents. The New York Times tells the story about Mr. Jerome Park, who was given an IMRT treatment for tongue cancer at a New York City hospital. His first four fractions were delivered as planned, but for the fifth fraction, the doctor decided to redesign the plan in order to give more protection to his teeth. And it was during this procedure that a software crash caused the MLCs to be wide open during the entire treatment. Uh, Mr. Park was treated with this plan during three fractions and was administered a severe overdose. He did die sometime after due to radiation injury. And errors are not a thing of the past. In December of 2016, the Star Tribune reports how seven former patients of a hospital in Minnesota filed a lawsuit for receiving faulty therapy plans. So how do we prevent these accidents from happening? The radiotherapy risk profile was published by the World Health Organization. It has identified thousands of published adverse events and near misses between 1976 and 2008, both in the Western world and in several developing countries. And what does this um, publication state about 
accident prevention. Well, what it says is that a very efficient method of preventing accidents is in vivo dosimetry. And now this is something that can be done with, for example, a transmission detector. Um, this is the manual for ACRO accreditation from the American College of Radiation. Accreditation is a process of review that healthcare organizations can participate in to demonstrate the ability to meet predetermined criteria and standards. So this is basically a manual for how to perform safe radiotherapy. According to this accreditation process, to perform safe radiotherapy, the practice has to have a continuous quality improvement plan. And well, improvement requires feedback, which is something you can get from a transmission detector. For example, you might want to find adjust the lost fractions after having evaluated the delivered dose so that you can make sure you really deliver what you intended to deliver. The information may also be useful for adaptive radiotherapy. Uh, moreover, the information for the individual patient can be very valuable feedback for the overall performance of your radiotherapy department. So to sum things up a little bit, filling the verification gap with a Delta IV Discover will give you an independent quality assurance of the complete treatment and you will be able to prove that you and your department are doing right and also improve your processes. So now I also want to speak about the Delta IV Discover, which is our transmission detector. What do you get with the Delta IV Discover? Well, you get an independent, unobstructive quality assurance of the complete treatment. What I want you to focus on here are the words independent, The Delta IV Discover is completely independent from the accelerator. The hardware and software are separate from the hardware and software of the linear accelerator, and it is not also not based on any log files from the Linux system. Unobstructive. Uh, the Delta IV Discover builds only six millimeters from the guidance pin and it is clear from the anti collision zone um, or the laser guard zone of the Linux. The detector can be easily slid out to view um, the light field from the Linux on the patient. It is made of carbon fiber, which means that we can make it very thin making the discover very thin thin means that the beam attenuation that it will provide is minimal and the same goes for the increased skin dose to the patient another advantage of the detector being this thin is that it reduces the consequences of any mistakes made in the handling of the device so let's say you're using a device a transmission detector that attenuates five or maybe even 10% of the beam. If you would neglect to attach this device to the Linux when including it in the treatment plan or vice versa, um, attaching it to the Linux but not including it in the treatment plan, um, that would result in severe over or underdoses to the patient. But having a device that's this thin um, will never introduce such a risk in your clinic. Um, the system also does not reduce the clear clearance between the accelerator and the patient. It has minimal influence on the beam from the LINAC, which means you do not have to recommission your LINAC to be able to use it with the Delta for Discover. An introduction of a simple tray factor is all you need before you can um, implement the Discover in your clinical workflow.
Um, and then finally, complete means that the Delta IV discoverer verifies all the, the important treatment parameters during every single fraction of the treatment. Um, so what we can verify is that the delivered dose is correct. Uh, we can make sure that the gantry and collimator angle um, are correct. And we, we verify gantry and co collimator angle for each control point. We can verify the MLC positions. We also have a laser distance meter, which measures the distance to the patient during treatment, verifying that the patient is in the right position. Mm, finally, I want to talk a little bit about workflow with the Delta for Discover. So when you're working with the Delta for Discover, you have sort of two options. In the uh, normal just discover workflow, what you would do is you can start by attaching the discover to the Linux and do an optional pretreatment check just to make sure that the plan was transferred successfully from the treatment planning system to the delivery system. You can then go ahead and deliver the treatment to the patient while the discover measures the machine parameters such as MLC position, gantry and collimator angle, uh, delivered monitor units versus gantry angle and patient position throughout the treatment. Whoop. The other option you have is to use the Delta for Discover um, together with the Phantom Plus. So in this case, you would start your treatment at, in the same way. You do your optional pre-treatment check and then you start delivering the fractions to the patient. But say hypothetically that you find an error in a machine parameter in the middle of the treatment. What you can do then is to bring out your Delta IV Phantom Plus and perform a Phantom measurement. From this measurement, the reading of the discover can be calibrated into dose, both for the fractions you've already measured and for all the uh, fractions you will deliver to this patient after your phantom measurement. This way you can investigate the full dosimetric impact of the error. So using the Delta for Discover, you will be able to independently verify all relevant treatment parameters during patient treatments, while you also decrease the time you spend on patient QA. For more information about the Delta IV Discover, I would recommend you to go to um, our webpage, um, delta4family.com, where we have um, all kinds of different materials that you can that you can check out. And I think that was it for me. So I'm handing over to Anders again. Thank you very much, Madeleine. Um, we have received some a couple of questions, and uh, I will uh, t um, ask uh, some of them. Uh, the first one is, what is the image spatial resolution of the detectors that the four discover? Ah, OK. So the distance between the detectors are um, five millimeters in the uh, Y direction. So that would be sort of the um, target gun direction um, across the MLC leaves. And then in the X direction or right left direction, um, so underneath the MLC leaves, uh, the distance between the detectors is 2.5 millimeters. How, and, and these distances are projected down to the isocenter. However, what might be a bit more, um, more interesting to know is about the, um, the sort of errors we can find since when we're looking for errors in leaf position, the software uses an algorithm to find, to find the leaf positions and the accuracy of that um, 
fair publications about it in on, on the web page but the accuracy found in clinical use is about 0 0.5 millimeters for stationary plants and about one millimeter for VMAT and IMRT. Uh, next question. Uh, what application can the Delta IV Discover be used for? Um, applications such as treatment techniques, I assume. Um, you can use it with, um, with all available treatment techniques delivered on on your normal Linux. So it, it, it works with 3D CRT, VMAT, IMRT. You can use it for stereotactic treatments. Thank you very much. And uh, can I transfer it between different machines? Yes, you can. So if um, if the different machines are beam matched and uh, entered as the same machine in the treatment planning system, um, you can just simply move it between machines. If you need to move patients between the machines, you can just bring the Discover with you. If you want to move it between different machines um, that are not being matched, that would require a, um, a separate calibration for each machine. Another question. Uh, I think you addressed it. How small errors can I detect in the MLC positioning? From the from the sort of clinical experiences we we have, um, it's about 0 0.5 millimeters for stationary so your 3D CRT plans and about one millimeters for for dynamic plans. That question concludes this webinar um, and also visit our website where you can find more information about the Delta IV Discover and our, our other products. Thanks again for joining this webinar.